Welcome to a brief history of dice, and yes, they did in fact invent the modern world, and we will hit upon that, but not for too much, because there's a lot of fun stuff going on. I'm Constantine von Hoffman, who cares, but that's, yeah, and that's my real name. Um, the, the weird part is I'm mostly Irish. Um, this is why you don't let the Irish go to college. Um, they name their children Constantine, and they write Finnegan's Wake. Um, all right, so a brief history of dice. Let's start from the beginning. What it, for for once? Um, earliest dice found in a backgammon set, 5000 BC in southeast Iran. And I would like to put to rest a dirty rumor I have heard uh, going around. I was not one of the players. <laughs> but. So people have been bored for a long time. There, there are mentions of them going back much longer. Um, the, yeah, going back to 7,300 7, BC. Um, those are, these picture is in fact the oldest pair of dice we've ever found. Um, so they, where do they come from? Probably the Indus Valley because pretty much everything came from there that didn't come from Africa um, directly. Well, uh, it's they're mentioned in uh, this. Uh, they play a critical role in a, in a great Hindu epic. And I've given up pronouncing these things because I know I'm just going to insult people. Um, but basically, the prince play, plays a game of dice against the other kingdom. Um, and this becomes the trigger for a war. Um, and what is also interesting is they are on Buddha's forbidden game list. Like, I always thought of Buddha as pretty chill, you know, kind of like, you know, being a Buddhist, I like think of, you know, Buddhism as like, it's for the people who find universalist Unitarianism too confrontational. Um, and, but no, Buddha had a whole list of games you can't play. I don't know why. Uh, you can't play games on boards with eight or ten rows, um, uh, which rules out chess. Uh, even you can't use imaginary boards, like in your brain. You know, uh, you can't mark diagrams on the floor, such as that player can only walk on certain places. So, um, you know, uh, yeah, you can't use nails to place or remove pieces from a heap. With the, so Jenga is right out. You can't throw dice, as mentioned. You can't hit a short stick with a long stick. Um, uh, this is similar to an actual Indian game called Guladanda or Russian Gorotsky. I am comfortable pronouncing my Russian. You can't, no hangman, no drawing a figure on the ground or wall after a dipping a finger in lac, red dye, flower, I love the specific, specificity of that. Um, and having other players guess what the pictures will be. No playing with toy pipes made of leaves. No ball games. If you don't like baseball, that's, if you don't like any ball games, you're, you're, come on over to Buddhism. I, I like no plowing with a toy plow. It's like, dude, like, what, teddy bears? No, like, I can't, no somersaulting. Don't even think about it. Buddha is not down with the somersaulting. Uh, no toy wind, I'm like, no toy, what? No toy windmills, okay, great, thanks. Dude. No toy measures. I'm like, so I don't get to pretend to be a carpenter, which is about as close to being a carpenter as I get to be. Uh, no toy carts, no to toy bows. This is like, this is like my my daughter's um, uh, kindergarten, which like ruled out any you know you couldn't bring gun toys in, so everybody picked up sticks um, and made guns out of them. I'm like, yeah, you know, people got to think, you know, it's like no, it's about caring for each other. It's not about making the pew 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 noise, you know. Um, uh, no guessing at letters traced with the finger with the finger in the air or on a friend's back. I'm doing a tournament of that next year. Um, that one is definitely no guessing a friend's thoughts. So no relationships uh, and no imitating deformities. All right, I'm down with that one. So there you go, Buddha. One out of seventeen with me. Okay. Um, how do we come up with this idea? First, knuckle bones, possibly, maybe, maybe not. Except sheep don't have knuckles, and knuckles doesn't need dice. <laughs> um, why do we call them uh, knuckle bones? They are made from the ankle bone 
or uh, the bone just above the ankle of sheep, cattle, or whatever, but they seem to look like, and you can come up and look at actual ones here, um, uh, knuckles. They're, uh, before that, people used fruit stone sets of flat sticks, seashells, nutshells, and pebbles were used to get random results for games. Um, all of these things, if you you know what the I Ching, casting the I Ching, I Chi, I Ching. Whew, I'm not the, Sunday morning. Um, all these things, including knuckle bones, come from uh, fortune telling, which was not on Buddha's list. I don't know why. I, so lottery tickets, you can do lottery tickets, apparently, according to the big guy. Um, uh, the things you could do with knuckle, knuckle bones, the convex narrow side is called the chios or dog, and it counted for one. The broad side was three. It's hard to tell. I'll go back. Do, 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 do. Yes. So um, there's a convex side, there's a concave side, there's a broad side, and so each side would count for a different amount. I don't think you really care which number counts, but it'll come in useful later, so take notes, especially when we get to the, uh, the test at the end. Um, but yeah, no, you could one, three, four, uh, and six, but they were early Monty Python fans, so five was right out. I appreciate that from, uh, from the, our good friends. Um, this, the same value is still used in the Indian game Pasa, which is re, um, related to Parcheesi, um, a, an underrated, Parcheesi and Sari, in my humble opinion, and I am the one with the microphone, unfortunately, underrated games. Um, and they are still used to play um, Mongolians, Still, I'm surprised the Mongolians even bother. Like, I'm surprised they aren't just throwing the real sheep, um, knowing the gentleness of the Mongolian culture. But so, now oddly, in ancient games, the total score for landing on the more difficult narrow face, one and six, were identical to the scores for the easier wide faces, three and four. Okay, keep that in mind. We'll come back to that. Or the other explanation for why we have his dice is maybe we just figured out how to make cubes. All right, uh, it's not exactly your more complex shape. I, I think even I have managed it. Now, the weird thing about dice in the ancient world is the ancients knew how to cheat, but they didn't know why it worked. There was, among the things found in the, um, one of the pharaoh's tombs was a loaded 20-sided die. Like, they had no understanding of odds or probability. So I, I think the thieves had, I think the cheaters had a, uh, well, I'll explain this. What are the chances of not discovering the laws of probability? Uh, if, yeah. The Greeks and Romans played games by chance, of chance by rules that make no sense in our own time. So if you get a time machine, Go back, you're going to clean up, okay? Go back, you, any game, you're going to beat them. Um, the failure to discover the theory of risk is all the more curious because these games were popular throughout antiquity um, and provided a lively laboratory for studying odds and probabilities. So, let me, in our next slide, you will see, I wonder why they didn't understand, why they didn't discover rules of risk. Here's a multiplication table for Roman numerals. <laughs> Um, yeah, I could see where that would be hard to do. Also, they did not have, uh, they had not discovered nothing, the zero. Um, so this, so let's jump ahead to the 17th century as I know we're all eager to. Um, along came two guys named Pascal and Fermat. Um, Blaise Pascal, they're, they are, they discover probability theory, and yes, I have lured you into a dice uh, history session, which we will get back to dice, and really funnily, I'm going to try and explain um, probability theory. Um, we could take bets on my success on that. Um, so, Blaise Pascal was smarter than you. He was smarter than anybody. He invented a he invented the first calculating machine, um, the which because of production methods and uh, was never 
uh, financially, you know, sustainable. Um, the next person to come along and invent this would be 200 le years later. Um, I'm not going into the Fermat got robbed by history um, because that's like, I don't even know why I have that line in there anymore. But that's Blaise Pascal. Um, when he was 14, he discovered one of the like key foundations of calculus. All right, I had failed algebra for the second time when I was 14. Okay, so now here's where I explain probability theory, right? Uh, yeah, I am a proud liberal arts major. Um, but here it, is a way, here it is in a way that even I can understand, and I'm going to not force you to read this whole thing. But in 1654, I will sum it up. In 1654, a gambler um, asks Pascal and Fermat to, uh, like, a, to solve a problem concerning a popular dice game. Dice, the game consisted in throwing a pair of dice 24 times. And then the problem was to decide whether or not to bet even money on the occurrence of at least one double six during the 24 throws. Um, a seemingly well-established gambling rule led the, the guy to believe that betting on a double six in 24 throws would be, pro would be profitable, but his own calculations indicated just the opposite. Well, he wasn't Pascal and Fermat, the great mathematicians. Um, there, um, they proved he was wrong. Um, for uh, Pascal, I, Pascal, and I think he was like just bored, um, basically outlined, comes up with the calculation that is the basis for all probability theory that people then will build on it later. Um, uh, so later, as time goes on, probability theory gets applied to a lot of things. And the reason I say it is the basis for all modern life is, Without probability theory, we have no insurance, and God, he's gone from probability theory to insurance. Thank you all for still being awake. Without insurance, we don't have exploration. We don't have corporations. I know, I'm not a big fan either. Um, we also don't have computers. We don't have modern economics, um, for good or ill. Um, you can't blame capitalism on probability theory. That much I'll give it. So. Anyway, that is my entire probability theory discussion. Um, so there you know. Okay, so let's get back to the fun stuff. We only had, you know, Gary, everybody knows Gary Gygax is, yes? Okay, God, thank you. <laughs> um, right, the first, um, the first 20 sided die. The Egyptians and the Romans both use a 12, 12 and 20 sided die, and a 7 and 8 sided dice are first mentioned in the 13th century, but we think they go back a lot farther. Um, there is no four sided die. I don't know why. I think the inspiration was right in front of them, um, personally, but that's just me. I, you know, um, it was standing there. Um, but Maybe they should have asked their slaves how to make a good four-sided die. Um, and, um, yeah, and of course, it's not until industrialization that we have standardized dies, which, like, was probably for the best because since no one understood probability, you know, you couldn't really be accused of cheating. So I think that probably saved a lot of people's lives. All right. Uh, clever... Uh, transitional phrase about Dyson art here, please. Somebody? Th that was a request. That wasn't a, that, that's not a statement. All right, so just a few. Um, Greece in 330 BC, uh, circa 33 AD, when they say um, the soldiers cast lots for Christ's clothes, um, they were dicing. Um, Hieronymus, ba or, no, Bruegel gives us this picture of uh, Holland in 1560. They're casting um, uh, knuckle bones. Um, Victorians included them in paintings of ancient times, which also always included naked ladies because they thought that would make it art. 
And to that end, I would just like to read this quote by John Berger because I'm having a sudden outburst of feminism. Uh, you painted a naked woman because you enjoyed looking at her, put a mirror in hand, and you called that painting vanity, thus morally condemning the woman whose nakedness you had depicted for your own pleasure. Thank you. That's the end of our, our morality. Okay, we are in a golden age of dice design. Thank you, computers. Um, they are... God, this is not going to... Well, this is going to be a quick panel. Um, it is only a half-hour panel, usually, anyway. So... Um, there are 237 different sh shapes of dice cataloged at dicecollector.com. You knew we were out there. <laughs> um, the um, first thing, I mean, you know, cubes have been around forever. They're boring. As long as each face has the same um, area, uh, then the mathematical, then the chances of them hitting. It doesn't matter what shape it is as long as the faces are equal. So without screwing up the probabilities. Um, we have come along with the three, five, 24, and seven sided dice. And I will invite you all, since there aren't too many people up, to come on up after my brief presentation to take a look and play with them. I have dice for every number between 1 and 34, in case you ever need a 17-sided die for that game. Um, one of my favorite dice is a 12-sided dice with the Fibonacci number sequence on it. I am determined to come up with a game for this. Um, that, that's uh, um, the three-sided die, in case you, also it is marked so that in case you found doing this too difficult, you can play rock, paper, scissors with a die. So if you're, it's like, though well, the hangover is not letting me do this thing without like massive amounts of pain. Um, um, so, we have round dice, 32-sided um, dice. Actually, I will, I will, once I'm done with this, I will, we have a cool display thing, so I'll just show them like that. Um, these are my all-time favorite dice. <laughs> they mess with my head, like, you're like, no, wait, that's, that's cheating. <laughs> that's, that's, oh, my head. <laughs> you got dice with mines. You got dice with words. This, uh, there's, ten, there's a 10-sided dice with um, the cardinal sins and another with the cardinal virtues, which, uh, so it just, dep that decides my day every time I wake up. It's just like, I don't know what you're gonna get. Floating faces. This one is called, ooh. <laughs> All right, we'll take a quick, uh, we'll take a, Quick break from the dice because I want to introduce you to a dice related piece, two dice pe related pieces of technology. One of which is formerly the most useless piece of technology ever. This is a dice tower because shaking your hand was too much work. This is from uh, the fourth century AD. Um, it was, uh, it, they were developed to prevent cheating. Um, um, so again, I go like, I think the crooks knew about probability and dice long before like the squares did, so, or the cubes in this case. Um, they are useless, but we love them. Um, I don't know, they, they have been, the, like I said, the earliest we have mention of them, I believe is, is AD, but I don't know when. Um, this is the basic interior of a dice tower. Um, here are a bunch of pictures of cool dice towers for your Thulu dice, for your beer drinking dwarf dice, for your, wow, that's cool dice, to keep the dice tower with dice pockets. This is for the deeply anal retentive at your next uh, gaming session where you get just, oh, I want the, so that's, that's one. This is where we get meta. <laughs> and I found these, I'm like, oh, I'm so making one of those. Um, this is kind of awesome. 
Uh, Wormwood makes these for a mere $150. They will carry your dice and roll them for you. I think for $150 you ought to get a bit more, but you know, but if I had $150, would I buy one? Yes, you damn right I would. <laughs> uh, for your Star Wars dice, um, if, yeah, that's like, man, if you have the force, like, I'm just, like, I'm not going to save the universe. I'm going to get rich, you know? Um, this one I just think is prettier than life. Um, metaphorically, life prettier than life. Let's, um, some more cool ones. Um, this one combines a dice thrower, and yes, I do own this one, but I didn't, I was gonna bring it, but it breaks easily. Um, so you get like a rubber band thing where you pull it back and then it throws it, and how, like, this is so useless. It is so useless. I love them so much, okay? This is, um, this one, goes on either side, you know, it's kind of cool stairway. This one, like, now you're just getting into pretty. Okay, that's just awesome. Um, you're more standard, you know, for your, for your gaming adventures. Okay, I used to call this the most useless, most useless piece of technology ever invented, until I discovered something even more so. The dice jail. Where dice go to repent their sins and I don't know why this is like really stupid, but I'm proud that I don't own one of these. We all know when dice have been bad. All right, I don't own them, but will I take the dice out and put it over here and talk to them? Yes, but I'm superior because I don't own something that says dice jail on it. This is, this is, this is taking moral superiority to a weird level. But, you know, it doesn't start wars yet, so... Um, um, I, yeah, there's nothing more useless, and really, I guarantee you, by the time I come back next year, I'll have 12 of them. Um, um, and this one, again, print your own. Pretty cool. All right, I'm going to show you, assuming I can get this all to work, and I probably can, because the nice people from Yeah, please. Oh, Gary Gygax um, invented a little known game called Dungeons and Dragons. Um, I, I've been hoping it would catch on. Um, one of my holy grails, or not holy grails, one of the, when my daughter started getting into D&D &D and her friends used to come over and I would bring out, because I still have it, my advanced Dungeons and Dragons playbook, first edition playbook. I'm like, yeah, you think this fifth edition stuff is big? Well, when it got advanced, that's when it mattered. Yes, ma'am. That's welcome to my club. <laughs> All right, so I will, I will now, I will now witness some weird dice. Okay, this is a 120-sided die. This is the largest that anybody has been able to come up with, like and manufacture. So there's the 120-sided. I'm, I know we all need these um, for every game. I, you know, most of these. Yeah, this is a hundred-sided dice, which makes a little more sense because who needs to roll those two d10? You know, yes, ma'am. Oh, oh, you want to see them? And I'll probably put, I'll put them down there. Okay, so there you go. All right, let me try that again. This is your hundred and twenty-sided die. This is your hundred-sided die. I'm so glad I washed my hands. Um, yes, yes, it, it works just, it works perfectly. It's whatever, ooh, I got a hundred. Woohoo! You are dead, Bronze Dragon, you are dead. Um, there is, let's see, this is my 50-sided die. 
which is a little harder to read, but it's, and it's, it doesn't have faces, it's just two cones put together, but it works just fine. Um, but, 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 what was the other weird one I was looking for? Oh, this one is, this one is, if you aren't seasick by the end of this panel, um, this is a 48-sided die because I'm going to, you know, the because part is kind of given at this point. Um, oh, something, the in, dice were, of course, frowned on because you could have fun with them. Um, the game of life was originally, which, all right, it's a toss-up between that and Mousetrap for my least favorite games of all time. Um, I know you feel better knowing that, right? Um, like, I would, I, would, I would rather play Hi-Ho Cherio than either of those two games. Hi-Ho Cherio, another underrated game, in my opinion, especially if you're surrounded by four-year-olds, because they don't know you're cheating. Um, God bless them. Um, but the, there is a spinner in the Game of Life. Game of Life dates back to about 1860, and the first board games were, or the first of that period were all highly moralistic and so you couldn't have dice so they had a spinner it was called a teo totem because the british are weird i don't know why like spinner no teo totem okay all right that's what we got okay so um this is another on the dreidel model it's an imitation of a of an old style die um this is, let's see, now we get into, oh, in case you were wondering, and I'm sure you were, um, this is a one-sided die. It's a Mobius strip, because, why? Because I had to have it. You know, there's no other explanation. Well, you get a one either way. It's, uh, you know, even I can do this math, um, you know. Nope, nope, that would be a two-sided die. That would be, a, and I do have those. Um, in addition to coins, um, this is my spell book two-sided die. So there you go. Um, this is a, this is a, uh, obviously a recreation because I, they wouldn't let me steal it, bastards, of uh, an early Greek die um, for fortune telling. Uh, this is early 12-sided die, recreation of an early 12-sided die, which I have always been impressed by because it is so evenly put together. I don't know if we can appreciate It is like, it's, it's as good as any 12-sided die we got today. You know, I don't know compo composition, I don't know, but anyway. So this is the rock, paper, scissors die. You, I have not inked it in particularly well, but this is, uh, this is a three-sided die. There are numbers at the ends, doo, doo, doo. and the rock, paper, scissors. You can kind of see it there. Yeah, so for days when I'm feeling even lazier than usual, which is hard to imagine. Um, ba -da -ba -da -ba, 15 sided, um, one of those throwing sticks. Doo, 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 doo. Um, <laughs> 10 commandments. This one's really cool, although it is really badly made. This is a Braille D20. Um, uh, so they have since improved their manufacturing, but I, yeah. Thank you, people who figured that out for us. Um, ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba. The Fibonacci number sequence die. Doo -doo -doo. And here's some others. This one is 16 or 18. Oh, here's the big question. You know, you've all seen a, an eight-sided die, right? Okay, and you all know the six. You know, you know, there's a little dot at the bottom to indicate that it's which is the six and which is the nine. On the eight-sided die, why is there a dot next to the six? <laughs> They're on all of them. I'm like, okay, thank you. Um, so this is my this is seventeen-sided die, seven-sided, uh, thirteen-sided. So. Um, really weird, cool, uh, um, <sighs> double, uh, 10 sided die or 20 sided die. Oh, I can't. 
Um, it is set up so that only one is at, t at the top. They are not, yeah. There are smart people out there, thank God. Um, I love this one. If you are casting Magic Missile, here is your D6 for your Magic Missile. Although I thought Magic Missile was D4, so. All right, so get out. Um, fireballs, that's what that is. All right, A, another D3 clearly marked. Um, ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Oh, this is, yes, my wife uh, is not divorced me yet, and no, I don't know why either. Um, this is a ring which is 2D10, because um, you're always walking around needing to forecast that stuff. other bullet shaded, bullet shaped D6. Whoop. Nah. But I can see it. That's all that matters. <laughs> it's all about me. Um, for I, I just want to show these. This is the awesome pair of dice my daughter gave me last last Christmas. She's my daughter. You can't have her as a daughter. Whatever else, that's not. But um, and this is an imitation of ivory dice, like uh, would have been made. Back in the ivory, back when we thought you could kill things at that level and get away with it for a long time, um, and I'm looking for my D5. All right, well, um, okay. Before I open the floodgates, oh, rocket-shaped D6. Um, there, are a lot of gem-shaped. This is a gem-shaped D8. Um, this is a gem shaped D20, which does not work as well as it should because the sides are too. Yeah, like you want consumer reviews, right? You know, you're here, oh, well, that's why I came to that. It's the Consumer Reports Dice Edition. Um, and, all right. And, let's see, anything else of fascination? Uh, those are my two pugs. Let's first, before the questions, Oh, you can't see it. Damn. Damn. Can't see the pugs. Well, all right. You're not going to get to it. But So, the questions, and then everybody can, can come up and like actually play with dice, which is really much more fun than sitting here me, listening to me babble. The 20-sided die goes back to at least the ancient Egyptians. And... Um, um, <laughs> Yeah, they they took Dungeons and Dragons seriously. <laughs> you know, back then you could get real dragons, like the cheap imitation ones we get today. Um, any other questions? Yes, uh, by the way, pips, you know, dots over numbers on the D6, always. That's a religious fact. It's just a statement. It's like the speed of gravity or something. So, okay, any, I don't, yeah. Uh, the speed of gravity, I just invented that. 16 feet per second squared, 32 second. Yeah, the liberal arts major is going into math. This is getting bad. So any other questions? If not, come on up. And you can ask questions then and play with the dice. So thank you all very much. Um, I really appreciate this. Yeah.